We've got some Cowboys news to get into on today's show, and this is exactly why you subscribe, by the way. When there's Cowboys news, we break it down for you on the Cowboys Report. Even if it's my off day and I've got baby Olivia out doing errands, I'll drop her off with her grandma and come in and do a video for you guys. So help me out and help yourself out with free Cowboys videos every single day by subscribing right now. Tom Downey here for the Dallas Cowboys report. The surprising news coming out of the NFL Combine for head coach Mike McCarthy. Dak Prescott underwent surgery recently, not for his throwing shoulder, not for the calf, not for the ankle. Instead, his non-throwing shoulder, a.k.a. his left shoulder. That news broken by McCarthy at the NFL Combine. McCarthy said it was a minor cleanup procedure. It's not going to impact his offseason. He's not going to miss any workout time. You know, he thinks it didn't impact him during the season. Although this is another example of a surprisingly lengthy long list of injuries the past year or so for Dak Prescott. But again, this is not viewed as anything significant. This is a cleanup procedure, which sometimes aren't even reported, by the way. And to be blunt... I'm a little surprised that uh, McCarthy let the cat out of the bag on that news when it comes to the shoulder surgery for Dak Prescott. So we'll break this down in depth, plus Stephen Jones's, A.K. Catboy's comments on Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence. So what is your one-word reaction to the Dak Prescott surgery news? If you get the ad break here on YouTube, you know what? Go take advantage of it. While the ad plays, head down there and let me know. One word only the Dak Prescott surgery news. My one word is surprising. Uh, this is a, a surprise, to be blunt, given that Dak was never on the injury report for this particular injury. At no point was Dak listed dealing with a shoulder injury of the left side. He was never on it for the right side either. Dak's play did dip as the season went on. The entire offense's play dipped. The running game, the, 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 the offensive line in particular, the receiving core. In total, it was a very productive statistically year, statistical year for Dak Prescott. Although I will make note, he is 0.2% away from having a nice year. Completion percentage-wise, didn't quite get it done from that perspective. 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Of course, the unbelievable pain of the disappointment still reeks for Dallas of a very disappointing end to the year. And it adds to another injury-filled year for Dak Prescott, who before this had never been injured. And the ankle injury he suffered in 2020 at the midway point of the year, not midway, but early on in the year against the Giants, a bit of a fluke injury, right? Then he has the right shoulder injury. Misses no game, misses no time, doesn't put impact him whatsoever on the field, but it was an injury he dealt with, a bit of a use injury from throwing the football as much as possible while he couldn't move that left ankle during the offseason and preseason. Then the calf strain pops up, costs him a singular game, maybe linked to the ankle issue, and then doesn't play great down the stretch. He has continued to say the calf was not an issue for him. The ankle was not an issue for him during the season. But apparently he wanted to get this left shoulder cleanup, which I would say is probably the result of a previous older injury. Again, doesn't really impact him on the field. This is not a Baker Mayfield type of injury being described as cleanup. That happens somewhat frequently throughout the offseason of, hey, I got this little minor bump and bruise. Let's get it cleaned up and taken care of. And in theory... This will then lead to a fresh offseason of no more injuries for Dak Prescott. So what is your level of concern when it comes to Dak's recent injury history? Before this year and before the ankle injury, there, that guy didn't miss snaps. He's only missed one game since the ankle, which maybe would have been two if it hadn't been the bye week. So be honest with me. Level of concern over Dak Prescott's injury. Scale it 1 to 10. Now McCarthy, who I will... Make note, also mentioned uh, the Sean Payton drama while McCarthy was not wearing Cowboys gear. Just weird for your head coach not be wearing that, but eh, whatever. I'm sure it's nothing in Dallas. He says it's minor, the injury for Dak Prescott. And I am inclined to believe him as well. If this were the right shoulder, we would be having a very different conversation right now. It is the non-throwing shoulder, so I would wager to guess that at some point he sprained it, strained it, landed on an awkward, didn't miss any time, 
probably like a year or two ago since he never popped up on the list for this past season and just wanted to get it cleaned up because, well, he just wants to be fully healthy for an offseason of not so much recovery, but for getting better, which he didn't really have the chance to do last year. We are getting closer and closer to 125,000 subscribers. If you want free Cowboys videos every single day, come to the right spot. Hit that big red button and subscribe for free Cowboys updates all off-season long. I am curious to see what more news and rumors come out of the Combine, given that the Joneses and McCarthy and other key members of the organization are down in Indy for this week's Combine. Speaking of other stuff coming out, let's talk about Stephen Jones, Catboy on the futures of Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence and... Eh, it's not really great. Here's what Stephen Jones had to say. I will make note this was pretty much a no news update from Stephen, but there are some things that are worth discussing. Stephen, when asked about, directly asked about Amari Cooper's future, it's too early for me to address yet. We're continuing to have conversations. A lot of things affect that in terms of we're obviously been so fortunate to have those great receivers on our roster, and obviously that's hard to keep doing under a salary cap. Certainly said, did a really nice job for us. He's up. There's some moving parts to that that we'll have to continue to massage as we move forward, which is kind of a, a, a weird line to say there. Cooper did not have a good enough season this past year. His numbers dipped. I would look to the scheme of run mesh one time with Amari Cooper and, and Seton Lamb. Just run it, run it once when teams are doing two deep safeties on you. Throw it five yards downfield. Let them go after the catch. That, that play wasn't used. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. But what Steven did allude to is that the Cowboys have several big free agents at the wide receiver position. If Cooper does not come back, well, that makes things a little bit dicey in the end because that leaves Gallup, Wilson, Turner, and Noah Brown as depth guys as free agents. This is, by the way, the, the overarching theme of Catboy Stephen Jones striking and he was asked, hey, why don't you go all in like the Rams? And Stephen said we could do some things that would allow us to keep most of our guys. We wanted to push it all out. But then we'd have a much bigger problem next year and the year after, which is wrong. <laughs> it's not true. People accuse the Cowboys of not wanting to win football games. I don't believe that's the case. I think their philosophy's wrong, though. They want to keep the window open for as long as possible. They don't want to have any bad contracts. What ends up happening is that Stephen Jones is so committed to winning the deal that they don't pay players immediately, and then they get screwed by their own guys because the, the cost goes up. It's happened with all the contracts they've done. Amari Cooper got $20 million per year because he took less from Washington. Dallas let their number one receiver hit the open market and drove up the cost for, for him. Demarcus Lawrence got franchise tag twice, and then he got paid. Now, he didn't play on the second tag, but his cost went up. And now the deals don't look as great because instead of striking at the right moment, you waited, and you waited, and you've cost yourself upwards of $15 million per year on various deals because you want to win the deal, but everyone knows you're going to cave in the end. Now, Stephen was also asked about Demarcus Lawrence. Same thing. I mean, we go through every player on our roster. I know you guys want to make target guys that you may be looking at, and usually those are the guys who are making a lot of money. Side note, get out of here, Stephen, for trying to blame us for looking at various players when you left the door open for this. And so that's what comes with making money. Unfortunately, is there value there? And certainly we'll work through that. We'll talk about two great football players in Demarcus Lawrence and Amari Cooper. I hold them up here in terms of what we think about them. But we also have to put the full 53-man roster together. Once again, there's the talk of pie, even though what you should be doing, especially in the case of, of Amari Cooper, is push money down the road. Why get worse? Now, if you're worried about Demarcus Lawrence's injuries, I understand that. That's actually my number one concern right now with Tank. When he's been out there, he has been immensely impactful. He's a better football player right now than Randy Gregory. I think the reason why the Cowboys have not done anything in terms of their roster is they're trying to judge everything, get all the balancing act here and go, okay, well, what are we doing with Gregory and Gallup and, and J. Ron Curse and others, and how does Tank Lawrence Cooper fit into that? In the end, 
I would say there's at least a good chance one of them is gone. Not a guarantee, not a lock. It's probably around 50-50 for both of them, but you guys can do math on that side. It's not great, which does annoy me, by the way, because I don't want to make this team worse. Like, why would, you, why would you make your defense worse? Why would you make your offense worse when you don't have to do that? The Cowboys tried the wide receiver by committee thing. It was a disaster. It was horrible trotting out Allen Hearns and a washed-up Terrence Williams and teams just, we'll just double-team Cole Beasley. No problem there. Keep your good football players. The cap is going to go up. Like, well, what are we expecting if you're Stephen Jones when you're worried about you know pushing money into the future and the cap jumps by $20 million in the next couple years each year? Like, oh, it wasn't ready for this. You know exactly what's going on. You just don't want to have that aggressive mindset because you're scared. Scared to compete. Cat boy is a bit of a coward in the end. So I do think there's a good chance one of these guys ends up being gone. If you could only keep one of them, who would it be? Type C for Amari Cooper or type in L for Demarcus Lawrence. Sound off for me in the comments section right now.